Hello everyone, welcome to Java Selenium Cucumber. Today, let's see how to write a custom XPath. So, before writing custom XPath, let's understand the difference between absolute XPath and relative XPath. So, we'll be checking Amazon website and from there, we will be writing our XPaths. Okay, for any element, we'll be writing XPath. So go to amazon.com. I, I have opened it in Firefox. So we'll be checking it in Firefox because Firefox uh, is something where we can see whether the XPath is correct or not after inspecting. Okay. In order to inspect any element, right click on it and click on inspect. Okay. You can also use a shortcut F12. Otherwise, you can right click and say inspect. Now, when I did inspect for this Amazon Basics, I got this high, got highlighted in the inspector here. Okay, so this is nothing but the HTML for this entire page, and for Amazon Basic, it got highlighted. So if I right click on this and say copy, it shows me all the XPath, CSS, whatever you want, you can copy it. Suppose let me copy the XPath and put it over here. Okay. So this one is giving me an absolute XPath. Absolute XPath means it starts from the root element, which is HTML, right? But it's not a good practice to use absolute XPath in your code or in your program because what if there is some new div got added in between? Your entire XPath will change, right? So you should always go for relative XPath or custom XPath. So let's see how to write a custom XPath for this element. Okay. To write a custom XPath, first we need to know what um, what um, value it has which is unique to this element. Okay, So this has a class. Here if you see nav A is a class name. But here also if you see the class is also having nav A. So we cannot use it. Okay, Always the ID is unique but this element does not contain any ID. Okay. So, we cannot use ID, we cannot use class name, we cannot use HRA because it's such a big one and we cannot use any other element which is again duplicate. Okay, We have to check for something which is unique. So, if I see unique then Amazon basic which is the text is unique to this element, I can use that. Okay, But text alone we cannot write use text so we have to write XPath for that. To write a XPath, a custom XPath, you have to double slash, right? Uh, to start it from the middle of the HTML, you have to start with double slash and give the tag name, which is A over here. So this is A, right? And give square brackets, okay? And say text. So when it is text, you have to say text and brackets and equal to, and you write Amazon Basics. So it's always a good practice to copy this, copy the text instead of writing the text okay. and just copy this from here and put it over here. When I hit enter, it shows me this element. It's highlighting this element. If I click on this and again hit enter, it shows me this element. Right. So from this, you can understand that, okay, so this is showing only one of one. So it is identifying only unique element and which is this one. So if I move my cursor here, it will show me Amazon Basic is getting highlighted. Right? So I can use this XPath to um, click on this or to do any operation on this element, I can use this XPath. Right? But if I have to use any attribute value, I have to give at the rate class, at the rate ID. I cannot use the bracket there. Okay? Only if it is a text, you have to use text brackets and then give the complete text. There is something called contains. We can also use that. So if you want, if you have any part of the text, suppose there are some numbers here, which is getting, which is changing in every refresh. So you cannot use uh, the complete text here, right? So you have to use something called contains, which will be using the part of the text. So when you are using contains, you have to give a bracket and you cannot use equal to anymore here. You have to give a comma. And then you can just give a part of the text. You can give any part of the text, whether it's start or middle, anything. Okay, so this is enough. And I can end the bracket here and let's copy this and put it here. Okay, so it shows me two elements here, one of two. So 
there is one more element which is also having some similar name c more amazon basics right but as this one is the first element which is showing we can use this as well but always try to use something which is unique to this one okay so let's not use contains here let's go for equal to something but if you suppose you have some element where you have to use contains then you can add one more attribute to this you can use and and or and use another attribute which will again give you a unique element to use and or or you can simply say and i can use any of the element from here like suppose i have an attribute called class so i can use this nav a but nav if you see there are some spaces so i cannot use equal to directly i have to use contains here okay. but i can use this so i'll say i'll just simply copy it and here i'll say add to the class okay so we have to use contains again and you say add to the class comma the contains whenever you use you have to use comma and whatever is the value you have to put it in single quote and in the bracket here and you can simply let's just maximize this just copy this path and put it here okay now you see it is giving one of one right so you can combine your elements like this using and using or or also we can use Okay. we have something called starts with that also we can use so for that you have to use something with which it starts with so i have to write amazon here okay because it starts with amazon this one can be anything or i can also remove it but yeah it has to start with whatever text you have to get that okay. now simply copy this and put it over here so this gives two element again right so you have to make sure this is unique so here if i see this one is giving as well amazon basic is coming as well as amazon home is coming right so you should not use starts with instead we can use contains or directly the equal to symbol okay okay there is something called ends with also but uh, that is not working and that's a known issue to selenium and uh, they are working on it but that's that doesn't work so whatever text it ends with you can give that text but with xpath it doesn't work okay with css it works but not with xpath okay so now that uh, we got to know how to write a xpath okay now let's see how to write a xpath using um, or how to find the parent element of this element so to find out the parent element what i can do is now uh, first let me just go back to the normal one okay. amazon b6 okay so make sure it is the correct x path okay. yeah so it's the correct one suppose you want to find out the parent element which is this div right so you can simply give slash parent colon colon double colon you have to give the diff you have to give the name of the element okay if i give this you see it's highlighting the parent element right now you have something called ancestor okay ancestor means parent as well as green parent so this div as well as this div as well as this div not this div because this is not the grandparent right grandparent is this one or this one like that okay. so you can hit enter it will show one of six okay so from this you can see how many which all divs are the parent or grandparent now suppose you want to go to the second or you want to go to the grandparent okay parent and grandparent so you can give here if you give here as one it will take you to the parent right so for a this is the parent but if you want to go back to the grandparent which is this one then you have to give here two okay so if you give three it will go to this one 
so like that wise it will go up 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 okay now suppose let's try to find out which one is the sibling element okay so this one is a sibling element for this a right for amazon basic this one is a sibling element but this is a preceding sibling element okay and this is a following sibling element so if we want to select best seller we have to go for preceding preceding hyphen sibling okay colon colon a so it will give you that okay now suppose you want to give the following element following simply you can give following sibling a it will give you new release okay spelling incorrect make sure you are giving the correct spelling always okay now it is selecting this one okay suppose you want to go for the second sibling simply you can give here as two it will go for the second sibling okay suppose and the one which we did was the first one you can give either one or you can leave it blank okay anything will work okay. so this is how you can write your xpath okay okay now that i had shown you the xpath uh, let me just go to amazon website uh, through the code and see how it is identifying that element and clicking on it okay so we'll simply say web driver driver is equal to new firefox driver and driver dot get HTTP which is mandatory Amazon dot com Firefox driver D should be capital okay now uh, that is the first element I can simply say driver dot find element by dot xpath and I'll give that xpath which is uh, so where is our xpath so this is the xpath let's see if we can click on this yes we can so we'll simply put the xpath here enter okay. and we'll wait here for some more time i'll simply say thread dot sleep for 10 seconds Okay, so you have to add the throws declaration here and else a driver dot quit okay looks like my um recording got paused so i'm just recording it again and i wrote driver dot quit okay now let me run this program So yeah, if you see, it is it's it went to Amazon B6. That's when you see Amazon B6 over here. And after 10 seconds, it will close the browser. And I have also written over here, click. I don't know whether it got recorded or not in the previous one. So yeah, I wrote click. That is when it clicked on Amazon B6. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the session. And if any question, please put it in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer that. Thank you everyone. Have a very nice day.